Wild ride on Wall Street Friday with the jobs report uh, coming out. Stocks now staging a broad rally. Let's get inside the markets with Jerry Brockman. He's Chief Investment Officer at First American Trust, joining us from Santa Ana, California. Welcome back and good afternoon, Jerry. Thanks for having me, friend. Good to see you again. Now, stocks, um, they rose sharply after the release of that much stronger than expected jobs report, but then they nosedived with the NASDAQ falling more than 2.5% now. Uh, the markets are strongly up again. So what's behind the volatility today? Well, I, I think there's a lot, been a lot of volatility when we look back over the last two months. Uh, and part of that is the economy is shifting a little bit. Uh, what we came from, and, and I think the key driver was the vaccine rollout. Uh, ever since then, we've, we've seen a big shift in the market from those companies that really benefit from a stay at home uh, COVID lockdown environment. So we have tech really, really strong performance last year. Um, companies like Zoom and so forth, and then once those vaccines came out <clears throat> and we now have light at the end of the tunnel and when we look through the unemployment numbers today and the pickup in all those um, new jobs the big driver of that was the leisure and hospitality space and that that is you know probably the most impacted sector through covid uh, and it's a very, very good sign that we are not just on the COVID stats where they're coming down and declining in a lot of places because of the vaccine rollout, uh, but also because we see pickup of jobs in those sectors most affected. Uh, and, and we all know if we get back to normal, uh, get back outside, we can go shop and go travel. Uh, there's a lot of pent up demand. I think a lot of people, uh, probably you and, and myself included, that would love to spend some more time outside with friends and so forth. And Jerry, that jobs report, 397,000 jobs created last month, twice what economists had expected. Um, and January's modest gains were revised sharply upward. So is it also a case possibly where uh, two good news is two bad news? Uh, yeah, obviously there was a lot of hope when those vaccine rollouts happened and, and we struggle getting enough out. Um, and there's always going to be a, a check between that hope and expectation and then reality. But if we take a step back and, and not look at the volatility this week necessarily, but we look at that progress and, and the sectors that have worked over those last two, three months, we're really looking at cyclicals taking a strength. Uh, and those cyclicals do well, as they're named cyclicals, when the economy is a recovering economy. So between the, the great job news today, um, the continued stimulus, both from Congress as well as low rates held there by the Fed, all this is fuel. And then when we look through the consumer picture, which obviously drives our economy, there's still a lot of excess savings compared to where we were last year out there in, in checking supply, uh, M2 money supply, uh, checking balances and so forth. So that pent up demand I was talking about before you know, has one of two places to go. It, it can go drive more consumption or it can go buy assets uh, like the market. So uh, do you anticipate, is, is this a good time? Should investors, your clients, be picking up stocks on these dips? If you're saying that uh, based on your scenario? I, I believe so. Uh, I, I think when you look, you know, two to three quarters ahead uh, at the rate where we're vaccinating folks by a million to a million and a half a day. You know, we have 300 some million folks in the US. In two to 300 days, we will be able to vaccinate all the people in the US and that, that is a game changer. So when you look back between that and another 1.9 trillion or somewhere around there of additional stimulus that hits people's checking accounts, I, I think that creates a great setup. Well, Jerry, we got the 10-year yield, the Treasury, uh, spiking to 1.625% today before pairing some of those gains. How should investors reposition their fixed income portfolios at a time when yields are rising? Do you send them into tips? Do you put them into core bond funds, high yield? Uh, where should they be reallocating their assets within fixed income? Sure. What we see, first of all, that higher rate is just another indication that at the bond market thinks the future is better than the present, right? The steep yield curve is indicative of that we're going to see higher growth in the future that drives some inflation concerns. And so to your point, from a fixed income investor, over the longer term, higher rates are great because you're, when your bonds mature, 
you're going to get a higher yield. And so from that perspective, you know, what we do like in a recovering economy is obviously credit, uh, credit over governments. Uh, and so looking at high quality credit, um, you know, investment grade corporates, for example, uh, as well as, you know, high quality munis uh, are where we're positioning our, our clients. And we think that is still in a very attractive market uh, because a recovering economy will suppress any default or, or credit issues on the underlying issuers and a rising tide lifts all boats from that perspective. So corporate corporate earnings, as we saw this last earnings season, have been very strong. But from a credit profile, the overall corporate credit market has been improving from its fundamental standpoint. And with less risk of default going forward, we think that's an attractive space. All right. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you very much. All right. Our thanks to Jerry Brockman of First American Trust. I'm Fred Katayama in New York. This is Reuters. Have a wonderful weekend.